excuse me, let us turn to the law of God. Our sermon text today is found in the gospel according to Luke chapter 11. But let us give our undivided attention to the law of God as it is found in Exodus chapter 20. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor. And do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Reading further in the New Testament, the Gospel according to Luke chapter 11. The Gospel according to Luke chapter 11. We will read the first 13 verses this time. And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us 
to pray. As John also taught his disciples. And he said unto them, When ye pray, say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so in earth. Give us day by day our daily bread and forgive us our sins. For we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And he said unto them, Which of you shall have a friend and shall go unto him at midnight and say unto him, Friend, Lend me three loaves. For a friend of mine in his journey is come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. And he from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not, the door is now shut and my children are with me in bed i cannot rise and give thee i say unto you though he will not rise and give him because he is his friend, yet because of his importunity, he will rise and give him as many as he needeth. And I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or if he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? Amen. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his holy word let us join our hearts in prayer together
Father, as thy children, we approach thy throne of grace. The throne of grace is available anywhere and any time to all those who call upon the precious name Jesus Christ, the one who died on the cross, not for his own sin, but for sinners like us. We are humbled to know how much Jesus had to suffer, how much he had to give up, and how much he had to endure while he was walking here on earth. And we ourselves are following the footsteps of this glorious Son of thine, Jesus Christ. Even in the time of great suffering like this, Help us, Father, not to faint, but help us never stop praying, no matter what. With the new year turning in, and as more days are ahead of us in this new year, if it is thy will, we will live and we will also seek thy will toward each one of us. Though we are not able to gather, though we cannot have the same worship as we used to have, in the sanctuary with each other. Still, Lord, we call upon thy name on this precious means of grace. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of Christ. As we are ready to hear thy word preached unto us, and spoken unto us in this means of technology. Will thou send thy Holy Spirit among us and be present with us when thy word is spoken about in thy name? Help every single child of God overcome all the challenges, all the evils, all the sufferings, all the enemies and all obstacles in approaching thee and knowing thee and in worshiping thee and in praising thee and in praying unto thee. Father, grant us Thy Holy Spirit, as we are commanded to pray, to knock, and to seek, and to ask, we do in this way, Lord, help, O oh Lord, help us in this condition in which we are found today. We are still not able to gather in one location. Many obstacles are apparent and obvious for the last several months since we couldn't gather together for each other and we couldn't gather to hear thy word preached. We couldn't gather to sing together. We couldn't gather to encourage each other. We couldn't gather to help one another in this lonely battle ground of Christian fight. 
Father, we rely upon Thee for every day. Not a day can pass without us calling upon Thy holy name. Thou knowest how much suffering and how much difficulties each one of us are going through in these days. Lord, do not leave us alone. Please carry us in thy bosom until we finish our days here on earth. Oh, Father. We think of thy people at this time. Remember Persephone Gospel Presbyterian Church, the minister, Reverend Nun Suche, and his elders and deacons, and from the youngest to the oldest, to the oldest from the youngest, we ask for thy protection and provision. All through these days. Thou would be near unto each one of them. We pray. We ask that no one would be left out. We ask, O oh Lord, that their needs for body and soul would be all met. In Jesus Christ. Lord, we often forget how much we are already given. How much should be given more so that we can truly give thanks unto thee, we ask. Indeed, already the Lord has given us the most unspeakable gift, which is Jesus Christ. In Him, there is freedom. In Him, there is no condemnation. In Him, there is true joy and happiness, holiness, truth. And everything that we would need until we finish all our earthly pilgrimages. Glory, power, dominion, and honor belongs unto thee, O Lord. Let us acknowledge thy holy name whenever we open our meal with one another as a family. Whenever we have to face the unexpected accidents and unexpected news in our lives. Whenever the devil tempts us to sin and whenever we feel intensely the temptations of the word and the sins around us, we pray for thy immediate and hasty help. Father, we pray for thy help for all those who are traveling on this weather condition for various reasons. And we think of doctors and nurses who still need to be available for helping other people in more urgent situations remember them in their trips from their home to the hospitals and hospitals to the home and use them mightily for others needs we also pray O oh lord for the ministers of the gospel who need to bring the message of this glorious joy and freedom and power. How can people hear when there is no one preaching? How can one be preaching 
without being sent. It is our prayer, O Lord, that on this Sabbath day, people may not go hungry spiritually. If they cannot go to the church building for various reasons, at least, O Lord, we pray that help their souls be nourished and be fed with the heavenly truth like manna day by day. We seek thy kingdom to come in our marriage between husband and wife. Lord, be merciful unto us. We confess our sins in that area as husbands, as wives. We cannot possibly love each other without thy mercy and grace. Give us new heart to love one another. We pray for our daily needs such as food. Many are suffering under this very uncertain times and we pray that every and single family would be provided for their daily meals and they would come to know man shall not live by bread alone but every word that proceedeth from the mouth of God we pray that all those poor in finance may also be poor in spirit. Help them to be truly poor in spirit that they may know the true riches found only in thy Son, Jesus Christ. Gracious Lord, on top of all these things, we acknowledge thy power and thy just judgment. Help us to be prepared for death anytime. No one knows what a day will bring forth and what tomorrow will be like. But keep us from unprepared death on the road or any, anywhere else in the act of any activities. Do not abandon us, Lord, but carry us with thee and keep us in the most the, in the safest place, which is in Jesus Christ. Now, Lord, we seek to learn how to pray on this day. Starting today, Lord, teach us how to pray. Deepen our prayer in the communion with the If we were already praying men and women, praying children, praying fathers, praying wives, praying daughters and praying sons, we pray that our prayers would ever improve in its content, in its manner, in its scope, and in its efficacy and power through Jesus Christ. Be with us now. Wash our sins away as white as snow. All this we ask in precious and mighty name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us read again our sermon text from Luke Gospel, chapter 11, verse 1. And it came to pass that 
as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. Dear congregation, at your homes and at your living rooms, in your couches, have you ever prayed before? If you did, where did you pray? And what did you pray for? And how often did you pray? I know some of you learn how to pray at your Christian home. Probably your mom and dad were praying in your home when you were younger with their eyes closed, with their hands folded together. They may have laid out all the necessary things before the throne of grace for body and soul and for time and eternity. If you think that you have already learned how to pray, how deep does your prayer go in these busy days? How frequently are you asking God to do something for you? Or how boldly do you ever pray before this almighty God? Given what Jesus said in John 14, 14, If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Why do we not pray more frequently? Why do we not pray more boldly? And why do we not pray more earnestly? Do we not believe this very promise from the lips of our blessed Savior? Why do we not more quickly? Rather, how can we not pray? Today is the day of salvation. It is not too late yet. Even today, God can save us from our sins and from the pending judgment of God. How can we not pray in this stormy weather? You and I are behind these computer screens to worship God. Even though this is nothing like the physical worship in the house of God, but still, this is a precious moment if you have waited for this seventh day in your life. God has spared each one of us in this past busy week. And we are here, 2021. February 7th, 1 o'clock, 1.35 in the afternoon. This itself is the very indication of how much we are given so far. 
you and I are given so much food, shelters, clothes, opportunities to worship God in this way. How can we not thank for that unto God? How many evils have been prevented from our lives all these years? From the moment you were born until very this moment today. How many dangers have there been already as you walk through all these years? A little virus, a little storm. A little sleep could you could you easily take your life away from this into eternity. When God has given us so much through Jesus Christ, why do we not thank God for all his blessings every day in Jesus Christ? Romans 8.32 says, He that spare not his only begotten Son, but deliver him for us all, how shall we, shall he not also with him freely give us all things? In this single verse, The magnitude and the scope of God's love and God's blessing is undoubtedly spelled out. If God did not withhold his only begotten son, his most precious person, what will he? Not give us. Even the secondary and lesser blessings. Compared to the most unspeakable gift. Ever that we could receive here in this life. So many verses. Like Romans 8.32 are found in this heavenly book, which is the Bible. To unlock this unsearchable riches found only in Jesus Christ, we, you and I, need to seek diligently Jesus and ask him. Like this disciple 2,000 years ago, who said, Lord, teach us to pray. Lord, teach us how to pray. For the next few months, God willing, I'd like to, I'd like to us to walk through the first 13 verses from this chapter that we just read at the beginning of this service. God, give us desire all these days to pray while we hear these sermons. Based on the first verse, Luke 11, verse 1, our theme this afternoon is simply learning how to pray. With the Lord's help, we'd like to consider three points briefly. First, what is prayer second what should we pray third how should we pray what is prayer what should we pray and how should we pray sorry the second point was why should we pray so what is prayer 
Why should we pray? And how should we pray? First, what is prayer? How would you answer? We see in our text that first one. Jesus was himself praying. He was praying in a certain place. We know from this particular gospel that Jesus was a praying man. By God's providence, we have two accounts of the Lord's prayer in the Bible. One in the gospel according to Matthew chapter 6. And the other is in this chapter, Luke 11. When there are two separate accounts of the same Lord's Prayer, that itself shows how much prayer must be to our Savior Jesus Christ. So Jesus not only taught how to pray, but he himself knew exactly how to pray. Jesus prayed when he was baptized in Luke chapter 3, verse 21. Jesus went out into the wilderness and prayed in Luke 5, verse 16. Jesus went out in the mountain to pray, and he stayed there the whole night to pray. Luke chapter 6, verse 12. Jesus separated himself from his disciples and from the other people to pray in Luke chapter 9, 18. And Jesus went up again into a mountain while he was praying. He was changed. He was transfigured in Luke 9, 28, 29 in the act of prayer. Already this is the sixth account of Jesus praying only in this gospel for the first 11 chapters of this book. If Jesus did pray this frequently, how much more should we try to learn how to pray? Jesus prayed so much night and day. And should we not at least look at and know what it is that Jesus did while he was walking with God here on earth? When it was the night before his crucifixion, what was he doing? He was praying again. And his sweat was, was as it were great drops of blood falling down to the ground. Then let us look at how the prayer is often defined by the older saints. Heidelberg Catechism, Lord's Day 45, question 116 asks this question. Why is prayer necessary for Christians? The answer is prayer is the expression of holy sorry because because it is the chief part of thankfulness which God requires of us. Prayer is the chief part of thankfulness. If you want to thank God for anything and everything, the best way 
the first way to express that thankfulness is through prayer. Whenever you have a meal, it's time to pray. Whenever you finish the day safely, it's time to pray. Whenever you received unexpected blessings from God, say jobs, say gifts, or any other beneficial things, your health, your spouse, your children, it's time to go to the Lord in thankfulness for prayer. Another theologian writes in this de definition, prayer is the expression of holy desires to God in the name of Christ which by the operation of the Holy Spirit proceed from a regenerated heart along with the request for the fulfillment of these desires. Prayer is the expression of the holy desires. We need to ask if we are expressing ourselves in a proper manner as God requested in ourselves as the children of God. Our worship is governed and regulated by the law of God. So one of the most important part of the worship, which is prayer, must be in accordance with what the law of God teaches us. Is our frequency of prayer often enough? Are we exercising our right and duty properly in the way of prayer? That's why we are studying this important portion of the scripture. How can we know how to pray without looking at this holy book? If you have never looked at the examples of prayers in the Bible, how do you know if your prayer is properly offered Unto God. We will know in various ways whether our prayers were answered or not. But first of all, before we doubt any answer from God, because God said, if ye ask anything in my name, I shall perform it. So we need to know how to approach the throne of grace in prayer proper manner. So many followers did pray in the Bible, including the very disciples and apostles of Jesus Christ. You would remember how the Asian church members were praying so hard that Peter who was imprisoned, was released by the help of the angel. You remember how Eliza in the Old Testament, he prayed so hard, more than several times, so that the rain that did not come for three years and a half could have finally come down. And it was according to the prayer of Eliza. Never underestimate how prayer should be done, no matter what, even in its weakest form. 
Samuel Rutherford says, a dumb beggar gets more when he can't talk than when he can. Tears have a tongue and a grammar and a language that the Lord alone can understand. Another Puritan writes, Better let thy prayers be without words than thy words without heart. Thus prayer is not just heartless repetition of the same words again over and over or same form of a prayer again and again without your heart in it and without your understanding what you are saying. It has to come from you. The very person in which the Holy Spirit inhabits and resides. You are the very holy temple of God for that reason. And you could pray and you must pray if you are truly child of God. So secondly, why is it necessary to pray? Why should we pray? Have you ever asked that question? You know why? First of all, the Bible is full of commands for prayers. If you look at the book of Psalms in the Old Testament, there are beautiful prayers written from the true heart of the saints like David and the Moses that we looked at last week and Solomon and other saints. It's an imperative. If you are a child of God, you must pray. Bible says, 1 Thessalonians 5.17, Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. Matthew 7.7, 7, Ask, it shall be given you. Seek, you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Philippians 4, 6. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And secondly, not only command, but we need prayer. We need it. What can you do when you find yourself stuck in a situation where you cannot run, you cannot walk? But kneeling down, nothing but you can do but kneeling down before the throne of grace. So many times in this life, we would have felt like that. What can I do? But the one of the famous Puritans, John Bunyan, wrote, You cannot do anything until you prayed. 
and you can do more than prayer after you prayed. The best thing to begin with any work, anything that you need to do, it's prayer. And even these days, I was very struck by the reality that we are not still able to meet with each other in one location after almost a year. We are still separated unintentionally, unwillingly in this very unprecedented condition. Still, there are there are so many different, di so much different pieces of information about what's going to happen next with this pandemic. But what can we do but kneeling down before Almighty God, as we did at the beginning of this service? Our desire is still clear that we want to worship God in a physical location with one another. Because that's the church where two or three gather together in my name. I shall be in the midst of thee. We need the prayer for each other. We are overwhelmed by what is happening. We are overwhelmed also by the requirements of the law. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Calvin said, our hearts is the idol factory. The heart constantly generates new idols. Temptations are with them. When our times need to be given to God and need to be spent to get to know more of God and more of His Word, the Word competes for our interests. Against God. Should we not pray. For the rest of the commandments. Don't ever neglect the law of God. God still requires. His law to be honored. And be kept. Whosoever we may be. God is just God. God will not be held. God will not be held unworthy. His law is still effective in his kingdom here on earth. And Thirdly, we are overwhelmed by our sins. How can you imagine your sins can be forgiven? When you look at its seriousness, its dirtiness, its heinousness, abominableness, its stinkiness. We are Overwhelmed by the sins. We feel like there is nowhere to go. We feel like there is no escape from the coming and pending judgment of God. Considering all the sins that we committed before all seeing eyes of God. Where should I go? But still, even after hearing the commands of the Bible and the needs within yourselves, you could ask yourself such a question like this. God is omniscient. Nothing is hidden from his eyes. 
There is nothing that we cannot hide from God. Then why should we pray ourselves? Could not God just give what we need as he knows them already? Doesn't the Bible say that before we ask anything that we need, God already knows it? Why do we pray if God already knows it? One of the reasons is that God wants to know if we truly know what we need. God wants to know if our faith is truly genuine. In spite of all our weaknesses and deficiencies, do we really trust God and His name for the provision every single day? Indeed, you know what happened to Abraham. By the time Abraham was told to offer his son, Isaac, the only son, in the mountain of Moriah, he was already a true believer. Genesis 15 lets us know that Abraham was considered righteous before God. But in Genesis chapter 22, God tells Abraham to offer his only begotten son. Why? Why would God do that? Because God wanted to know truly. If Abraham believes in God. If Abraham believes in God. Who can raise a dead person. God provided. And God spared Isaac. But Abraham's faith. Was truly known. When he offered. When he was about to offer his son Isaac. God wants to know your faith in prayer. Lastly, what are the things necessary to acceptable prayer? In other words, how should we pray? What should be included to make the prayers that we pray acceptable before God? First of all, it should be from the heart. God wants the prayer from undivided heart. There are many hypocrites in the days of Jesus Christ. If you look at Matthew chapter 6, the parallel text of Luke 11. Jesus warns against such prayers offered by the Pharisees and the hypocrites. Their prayers were not the examples that we should follow. Of course, there is time when we have to gather together and pray publicly with one another. But first of all, before that, Jesus teaches us to pray in our 
own closet secretly. When nobody else sees us, God sees us in prayer. As soon as we close our eyes, God opens his eyes to see us. However, God does not want prayer from a divided heart. God hates the prayer from the divided heart. Like the prayer of the Pharisees. Husband and wives among us. You know what it is like to speak with your spouse in a hearty manner. You don't hide anything from each other. You really care for the smallest uncomfortableness in one's heart when you talk with each other. You want to be touching each other's heart. That's it. That's how God wants you to speak to him if you pray. Prayer is an expression from one's heart to God's heart. Only then it is true prayer. I said God hates a divided heart. You know how those two women who claimed the child as her own before King Solomon in the Old Testament. The one woman avoided cutting the baby in half. Truly, the child was her child. She wanted the whole child. The true mother did not want to divide the child, so God does not want to have his people's hearts divided. Thus, we should pray wholeheartedly. And how should we pray? Our prayer should be based on the true understanding of our own condition. If you don't think you are sick, you will never ask for a doctor. Do you? Do you go ever to the hospital and ask for a heart open heart surgery when your heart is functioning perfectly fine? No. You will never waste your time and energy for your healthy heart. But if you know truly that you are infected such a serious sinful disease in your heart you will go to this physician who alone can heal your heart that Jesus Christ unless you know your own condition truly and honestly before the eyes of God you will not likely to pray truly. You will not offer God your heartfelt, wholehearted, fervent, earnest prayer as if nothing could be done without prayer, outside prayer. That's how we should pray. We should know our own natural 
condition heading for destruction. Thirdly, our prayer should be in the name of Jesus Christ. We call because of Jesus, God, Father. God is almighty, holy, and just God. Think about this. Why should God ever answer your prayer if he should? What is the single most important reason that he must answer your prayer when you pray? We can't find any better answer than in the precious name that we are given, which is his son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross, who suffered the hellish agony for sinners like you and me. If there is any reason why God has to look at your prayer request, the reason is not found within ourselves. It is in the finished work and perfect person of His Son, Jesus Christ. That's why you need to mention His name in your prayer. Whenever you pray, all the saints in the Old Testament era had to pray in expectation of the coming Savior, the Son of David. Outside Jesus, no prayer could be made. Only through and by and in the mediator, Jesus Christ, we can pray. As long as you pray in Jesus' name, you can pray anytime, anywhere, in your living room, in your bathroom, in your closet. God will hear your prayer. Many of you might feel like this these days. You need to pray, you know, but you don't feel like praying so much as you want to do other things. Your life can be easily crowded out with other stuff if you don't watch carefully. Your six days will be just gone like this immediately. If you were like me, brought up, raised in Korean context, you would know what it is early morning prayer like. Before you go about any other businesses of the day, you want to set apart your precious time just for prayer. Just for prayer. Caring for nothing, worrying about anything. You want to just give yourself in prayer in that sacred time of the day. But still, you could pray. Just say one word Lord. Isn't this prayer? As long as you put your whole heart in that word. If you really know what that word means. Lord means the possessor. The one who holds the whole world and universe 
at the palm of his hand, the possessor, the one who has every single thing that we need. If you know that truly, if you mean it, when you say the word, Lord, will he not answer your prayer? Will he not give you what you stand in need of? Whether for temporal blessings or eternal blessings. Can't you say just, Lord, with your whole heart, with your groans, and sighs. Remember. Jesus. Had to suffer. So much. And that was. For a reason. Because Jesus suffered so much. And pay. For the price of the justice perfectly and completely and finally and fully. God can now answer our prayers and give us what we need. Now. Is this our request today? Lord, teach us how to pray. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious Father, at the end of this time, we humbly and earnestly seek thy kingdom and thy righteousness more than anything else. Come unto us, O Lord, and make us of thy possessions. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us conclude our meeting with these words from Jude chapter verses 24-25. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. <laughs>